Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Wally Bopkowitz, the city administrator. Uh, thank you for joining us for the uh, second of uh, what will be two community meetings talking about uh, what we hope will be a new environmental board uh, for the city of Issaquah. Uh, we have a pretty straightforward agenda uh, to go through the, this evening. Um, and there it is. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the logistics for the webinar. Um, we'll do a little presentation on uh, what we heard at the last meeting. Uh, and really, we're here tonight to ask uh, for your feedback in three particular areas. One, uh, the title of the group. Uh, two, what the membership uh, should look like for the group. And then the duties and responsibilities. Um, our goal for tonight is to get all your feedback. A package up uh, the feedback from tonight, the feedback we received at the first meeting, and take all this to the city council uh, at a study session on Tuesday, July 14th. So in about two weeks, um, where the council will hear all this, will deliberate and decide the direction that they wish to go uh, with the uh, with the new board. Uh, the logistics for the webinar: uh, please keep everything on mute. Um, uh, if you talk, obviously take it off, but if you're not talking, uh, please uh, leave it on mute. Uh, if you have a question, please use the chat box, the, uh, the little bubble icon there. Uh, this is being recorded and uh, under Washington's open meeting laws, uh, we can't have conversation. Um, that's not a part of the larger meeting. And so the chat is not included in that. So please just use the chat uh, to let me know if you have a comment or a question. And I'll call on you and you can share whatever you'd like to share um, for phone participants um, in order to get them off mute. Tisha, they have to press star what? So, if they're interested in commenting, they can press star 3 on their phone and that will raise their hand and then I can okay. unmute them. Okay, great. Uh, and then again, as I said, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, we will uh, post the meeting as we did the last meeting on YouTube for anyone in the community. Uh, to want to see. So that's the, the logistics. I think unless there's any preliminary questions, um, I'm going to turn it over to Megan Curtis Murphy from our Office of Sustainability, uh, who's going to walk us through uh, what we've heard so far and uh, uh, the beginnings of a uh, uh, description for this new group. Megan, good evening. Great, thank you. Um, so first off, uh, thank you everyone for participating this evening. Um, and thank you also for all of your insights and comments um, on the survey and at our meeting on June 16th as well. Uh, we had about 50 people on that last call. Um, we had 66 visitors to the survey with about 40 responses um, and now have a great turnout on this call as well today. So again, thank you. One moment, changing the slide. Here we go. <laughs> um, so here we have a summary of some of the high level comments um, from both the June 16th discussion um, and the board follow up survey. So I'll be talking this evening about the um, proposal for the board, which we sent out to meeting participants on Friday. Um, and I'll also be weaving in several other comments throughout the presentation this evening. Uh, so at the last meeting in the survey, we heard several things. Um, first, a huge thank you to the past members of the River and Streams Board for their dedication and hard work to help protect the environment here in Issaquah. Uh, next, we heard a lot about um, youth engagement and how the participation is key to the success of the board and to developing solutions for our climate crisis and environmental protection in our community. Next, we heard about the authority of the board. Um, so here there was a desire from many community members for the board to have teeth, which was described in a few different ways um, from having voting authority on other boards to having decision making authority on development projects. And then also ideas about the board having a strong advisory role to the mayor and city council. Um, next, we heard several people talk about the importance of outreach and education. Uh, so there is some discussion about this being something the board could advise on creating uh, rather than it being a direct responsibility of board members to do since they already have several items. Um, there was also several people interested in a sustainability volunteer program. So members of the community could help with some of this work. Uh, there was also specific interest in um, particularly around residential and commercial outreach and education on waste reduction and recycling. Um, next, we heard about advocacy. So there was discussion and comments on how the board could be advocates to council on environmental topics, 
But there was also talk about wanting to stay process oriented and also politically aware of the issues. Um, next, we talked about uh, breadth and depth, and we heard in the survey as well that there's a lot of um, comments about kind of the, the overall, um, the breadth and depth of the board. So some people wanted the scope to remain similar to rivers and streams, but add in other environmental topics. Um, others believe the board should move away from that level of technical detail to incorporate a wider variety of topics. And others suggested wanting two separate boards to cover all of the topics. Um, but overall, the topics that really rose to the top of the, the um, survey and the discussion were around protecting the natural environment and addressing climate change. We also heard um, comments about interaction with boards, um, with other boards. So there, there were questions about how the board would interact with other boards, um, which is a conversation which has been started in the city and I think will continue with the creation of this board as well. Uh, we also heard from many a concern about needing to protect our environment, including our streams, wetlands, open spaces, critical areas, and animal habitats, um, and particularly from development. So some people were advocating that the board should review all development proposals that would impact the environment. Um, others thought that a review and revising of city plans and codes would be sufficient. Um, and we also heard comments that there isn't enough capacity for the board to address both climate change and development review. So a good variety there. Um, so we'll talk about this a little bit more as we get into the proposal as well. Um, last, we had asked a question about measurements of success and um, heard back in the survey as well. So we received several ideas about what success would mean for the board. And I think this is a topic we'll revisit more once we get the board up and running. Um, but there are some great ideas ranging from providing measurable improvements in our environment and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and then another one was to have a diverse and representative board as described under membership, um, which I'll come back to very shortly. So again, thank you all for this wonderful input, um, and I will continue to talk about it throughout here. Here, um, I'm suggesting that we call this new board the Environment and Sustainability Board. Environmental protection was a common theme we heard and I think would be represented in the name here with the word environment, which often refers to the natural environment. And sustainability is a more holistic term for several other environmental programs and climate related topics. Um, particularly in the survey responses, there were references to keeping Issaquah livable now and for future generations, which I think really helps, um, the sustainability word really helps capture that. I also think the name provides for the flexibility of the board to address new and emerging environmental topics in the city, which was another comment that we heard. Um, so here the objective is um, to advise the mayor and city council on the city's plans, policies, regulations, and programs relating to the protection of our environment and climate change. So a few themes emerge in the discussion and survey around the purpose of the board. The main ones being that the board should inform, advise, and guide the city on environmental and sustainability related topics. So as discussed some at the last meeting, uh, the mayor and city council serve as the primary decision makers. So by advising these bodies, the board can advocate for environmental change. There were also two themes that emerged the most around protecting the environment and addressing climate change. These seem to be two important elements to include in the objective themselves. So environmental protection is also from the river and streams objective, which several people supported and wanted to see represented in this new board as well. Climate change and reducing greenhouse gas emissions from buildings, transportation, and waste were also frequently mentioned in the survey comments. So moving to board membership, um, here is a word cloud using the survey responses and discussion around this topic. Um, I think this slide can be interesting to look at, and it also really captures a lot of the content from the discussion that we heard. So you see several items really stick out. Um, including areas of expertise like scientists, engineers, and landscape. Um, I also see climate, youth, and business called out here, as well as education, diversity, and sustainability, um, all as important elements represented here that um, the community wanted to see represented in membership. Uh, so we tried to capture many of these aspects in the description of what uh, the membership would look like. Uh, so we're proposing that this board have seven members with two alternates and at least one of the board members would be a youth. Although not a requirement for city boards, we propose the majority are residents of Issaquah, 
So although climate and protecting our environment doesn't always follow jurisdictional boundaries, the policies we implement do. We also want the board to be diverse in age, ethnicity, professions, and backgrounds. We also want to see a variety of expertise on this board, um, including representatives from the natural sciences, climate, sustainability, uh, natural resource management, and environmental policy. Uh, we heard that, uh, that we want to have community representatives that have also shown an interest in the environment, either through training, experience, and actions. And as the board will be covering a range of topics, we want to see a balance in these topics represented through the backgrounds of the individuals on the board as well. Um, lastly, there were a couple other considerations um, which we'll have during the selection process as well. Uh, the first is around process management. Uh, so the June 16th discussion and comments talked about the sensitivity of some environmental issues and the need to advocate for them, but also recognize the overall process and other factors that might come into play. Another item we heard was about communication, and it's important to help make these initiatives successful. And lastly, business representation is important as some of the items discussed and proposed will have an impact on businesses, so it's important to have in their interests represented in the discussion as well. So clearly, we've listed here functions for a few more than seven people, um, but I think in this realm, individuals can wear multiple hats and help carry this balance. Um, this list is also really meant to um, help recruit a wide variety of individuals that will best guide the city on its environmental decision making. And it also provides some flexibility in selection over time as the board addresses, as the board um, priorities may shift with new and emerging issues as well. So now to talk about the duties and responsibilities for the Environment and Sustainability Board. Um, so all of the items here are at the direction of the mayor and council. The first item is to provide feedback on city plans, regulations, and codes that impact the natural environment to ensure alignment with community vision. This really speaks to the concerns about protecting our environment from development, which was something we received several comments on. By updating and revising on these items, we can help ensure the protection of our environment. I think Title 1810 on environmental protection and critical areas is a big piece of this and will be an item for this board to review. And this is also an item that would have originally gone to river and streams, but has a place on this board as well. Next is research and review environmental policies and ordinances for the city. So as the city works to develop new environmental policies, the expectation would be that this board would have a chance to weigh in and provide feedback. Similarly, uh, this board would help advise on planning and prioritization of actions related to climate mitigation and preparedness or resiliency. Uh, next is to develop recommendations on programs, services, and priorities relating to environmental sustainability <coughs> and protection. So this is a fairly large bucket and could, could include some of the recommendations that we heard about commercial outreach and education um, that were talked about at the last meeting. It could also advise on topics such as creating a sustainability volunteer program, which was another idea that we heard about at the June 16th meeting. Um, and the last item here is um, to develop and maintain an environmental and sustainability checklist to be used on projects. So as I talked about earlier, um, both the discussion and survey comments showed a concern, the impact on, on um, that development can have on the environment. So along with making recommendations on codes, which we already talked a bit about, we're also suggesting this checklist for projects. Um, so this project will need to be scoped further um, once the board is up and running, but we anticipate the discussion and creation of the list happening through this board. Um, so I think this list covers a lot of things we talked about the board doing, um, but also recognizing that one board can't do everything. Uh, so as always, even after the board is formed, uh, the mayor can always direct other issues or priorities for the board to address. On this last slide, we have a sample list of agenda topics that I think would be of interest and importance for this board to review. As you can see, it addresses both items that protect the natural environment, such as the shoreline master program, and others that are more related to climate, such as advising on climate policies and actions. Some items are similar to what the river and streams may have reviewed, um, such as Title 1810, and others reflect um, the broader scope of this new board, including the tree canopy assessment. Additionally, some of the items require direct input, such as the storm and surface water master plan, and others, like the greenhouse gas inventory, 
is more of an update to help inform other climate related work. For all of these items, uh, the board would be playing an advisory role to the mayor and council. Um, and we expect that um, for the flow of work, staff would present to this board and staff would listen and incorporate um, their recommendations into the work and also report back to the city administration and city council about um, what they heard. So this is really just an example list that shows the variety of topics the board could address at the direction of mayor and council. And I expect there'd be other items brought up um, depending on the makeup of the board and as um, and as priorities arise in the city. But we're excited to see this um, get going. So I'd love now to open it up to questions um, specifically about the presentation or the board. And then after that, we will move into um, the discussion. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and type that you have a question into the question box. Great, uh, excellent presentation, Megan. Thank you very much. Um, so why don't we start with some general comments or questions, and then I'd like to move to the three specific issues, uh, areas we wanted to talk about, and that was the name, uh, the, the, the makeup of the group, uh, as well as then the duties and responsibilities. But I see there's a couple of initial questions, so why don't we go and take those first. But Trish Bloor, do you have a question? Um, yeah, but I think I think you might have just said, let's leave it for later. Well, I just have a basic question. What is the difference between a board and a commission? I don't know that there is a specific difference. You know, Tisha Geezer, our deputy city clerk, is on. And if anybody has an answer to that question, it would be Tisha. Tisha, you want to, is there a difference between a board and a commission? No, there's not a meaningful difference. The, the term is used interchangeably. Okay, uh, this, so you, this could be a commission if the group thought that sounded better than a board, I guess. Um, certainly, uh, we have both boards and commissions in this clock. Okay, I was just wondering. And then um, my next, I have a comment, a couple comments about the makeup of the board, but you wanted to address, the, you wanted those questions to come in later, right? You know, if we could start with general questions, that would be great, or general okay. comments. So, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I come back to you, Trish. Uh, Ann Fletcher, next question or comment. Hi, this is Ann. Um, I just wanted to um, uh, comment that I think that uh, you came up with is um, a reasonable representation of many, many factors. And I appreciate um, you explaining how those, how what you came up with uh, came from the input um, and where it belongs. And I'm sure more of that will come out as we uh, as we have our discussion on uh, details of how things that are wanted or people are think are important um, are reflected or not reflected in the um, proposal. So uh, I mostly want to thank you for putting together a huge amount of information and um, I think that um, this is a really great start. So thank you. Great, thank you, Anne. And thank you again, Megan, for all your great work. Uh, Steve Pereira, you have a comment or question? I want to see have some network glitches, so hopefully I won't drop off again. Uh, and you folks can all hear me. Uh, so a couple uh, thoughts, I'll take my turn, though I don't want to shoot them all up at once. First was, uh, and I'm just asking what's the difference or why not have this group have a be like the development commission and have decision making authority. What's the reasons and arguments for or against that? Um, you know, I, I think one of the things we want to do tonight is as far as take comments and questions. And I think the, you know, the, the decision making role. Uh, is something that we've heard from many people. And I think ultimately that's not a decision uh, that the staff can make. Uh, it's really a decision the city council will need to make. Um, the, the current processes that we have with the development commission and the policy planning uh, commission are, are those current roles. And so I think if the group would like us to, to share the thought that this would be yet another uh, decision-making body, we would just need to sort through how that all fits in. I think at this point, it's envisioned as being an advisory body, as are the lion's share of the rest of our boards and commissions. 
Um, but you know, this is again, we're, we're we're hoping tonight to you know get whatever additional feedback there is, and we'll certainly pass that piece of feedback on. I was simply asking the question if it's or pros and cons of that argument. I don't understand the reasoning. I just wanted to understand. I, I, I think one of the one of the challenges. I think one of the challenges in any community, and this is not an Issaquah specific issue, is how many planning committees um, that have decision making authority does any one project go through, uh, and what happens when those uh, groups are in conflict? Um, does that then take a project that might otherwise not go to the city council, then take it to the city council? Um, how how do you resolve those conflicts? So. Uh, again, if the council wishes to send us down a path that that considers that, then I, I mean, certainly we could try to sort through that. But I think if this is an advisory body uh, advising the final decision making, um, you know, that's perhaps a more straightforward process. Does that answer your question, Steve? Uh, I would like to hear more, but at this point, yes. And I think ultimately it's going to be a question we'll we'll take to the city council, and the city council I think will have to weigh uh, what they think is most appropriate. Um, next is uh, owner, and I'm sorry, sir, I don't remember your first name. Uh, it's just appearing as owner up on on the screen. Connie Marsh, I think is next. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, Connie. I apologize. I'm looking at this in the wrong way. Connie. Question or comment? Going, I don't know the owner. I'm sure of that. So, uh, the question is, who is staff? Because when Megan was describing the process, she was saying this uh, group would provide input to staff, and that's to me different than advising the mayor. So I didn't know who staff was, and if you would have all the staffs of all the different departments coming through this committee with their varying topics, like the Parks Department, Public Works Engineering, Planning Department. Um, so who, who I, I, I guess Megan's in charge of working the actual group, but so I guess I don't understand how the information is going to flow through and who staff is that we're advising. Sure, um, I think it, I think you put your finger on it that it's going to be depending on the issues. So uh, our, our, our parks department is going to have pieces of issues that come through uh, here. The office of sustainability will have pieces that come through here. Our, our public works department, which we're in the process of merging. Uh, so, what has been public works operations, public works engineering, uh, will will bring issues through here, and our development services department uh, will bring issues through here. Uh, but but the, the the group would be staffed through the office of sustainability. They would they would be they would be staffed to the to the board, uh, the agendas and, and things like that. So, how is that advisory to the mayor and council as compared to advisory to the staff? So I think it's both. I mean, I think that again, when we look at the the responsibilities, there are some things uh, that will be coming from the staff, something that will then go back to the staff, uh, other things that will go on to the city council, depending on the topic. Um, you know, and I, I think as the group is is formulated, um, you know, we'll be able to sort through that. Uh, but again, the the mayor and council has the ability to refer items to all boards and commissions now. Uh, and boards and commissions can ask for work plans to be reviewed. Uh, so, you know, th there's still going to be the city council and the mayor having, uh, you know, the, the larger jurisdiction over what this group does. Uh, but again, if we're working on a, a climate action plan uh, with a task force of, of residents, uh, we, will bring, we would bring this through. Again, Megan has a slide, maybe we can get back to a little later about the, the various topics that would come through. So I think it's, it's going to be a, a, a center hub for a lot, all of these issues. Does that answer your question, Connie? Uh, yeah, I, I'll grind on it in comments. Okay, very good. Um, we're back to, uh, I guess it's Phil Bruiser who's owner. Phil, did you have a question? Oh, your question is who determines membership of this new board? 
um, it would be determined through the ordinance. So what what we'll be doing is uh, uh, the council will be giving us some direction of what a new ordinance would be. That ordinance would contain the makeup of the board. Uh, people, interested parties would then apply to be members of the board. And uh, based on uh, those applications, the mayor is the one that appoints the individuals to the board itself. Um, next question is from Lara MacBook Air. Uh, how would this board advise fit coordinate with the Issaquah comprehensive plan? Um, Megan, I don't know if you want to try to to take this as far as the you know what what we envision any kind of changes to to land use to codes and documents would be. Yeah, um, I would expect that um, specific environmental related issues. So whether we are uh, looking to adopt new climate policies that we would want to see in the comprehensive plan, I would expect that would probably come to this uh, board first um, for for some feedback on that, and then it would go through planning and um, through PPC planning policy commission um, as all policies do before they get incorporated into the um, comprehensive plan. So I, I think it, Megan, one of the challenges we're going to have is to once is to insert this group into those various processes that that doesn't currently exist, and we're going to need to to work with the department, the various departments. Um, certainly, DSD is one of them, uh, but also, I mean, the parks and the park board and the work that they do uh, is going to have to be. Uh, we're we're going to have to sort through uh, that as well. Is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. I agree, and we have been talking with each of those um, board liaisons right now, so they're all aware of the conversations that we're having and agree that kind of as as topics come up, we'll be continuing to sort through it as boards often do now too. Uh, Steve mentioned in a comment that he wants the board to advise not just on the city code, but on establishing uh, uh, the, uh, the the priority of appropriate. And I don't know um, if he finished that. But uh, Steve, do you want to chime in again? I keep trying to tab over and keep it in enter, thinking I'm tabbing, so I never get my thoughts typed completely. I apologize to folks. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I want things like Title 18 to be included, the city code to be included, but I also want this body, whatever it's going to be named, to help set what the priorities are for the work items and the work packages that are set and we need to we prioritize the order that those things happen and give that as input or decision making, whatever that body is. Great. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I keep going, but I, I'll keep working on my tag and go with the next person. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other uh, requests for comments or questions, so maybe we can go to the first question, and that is the the name of the board. Uh, we're proposing Environment and Sustainability Board. Um, is that a name that makes sense for people? Um, are there other ideas? Board versus Commission. Um, any thoughts on that? It's a great right. name. Great name. All right. Yeah, Any I'm other? fine with it. Yeah. Great. Any other comments? Uh, Connie, thank you for using the chat box. I didn't look right before. I'm just so busy with the main screen. Uh, the word sustainability means nothing. It means everything. So uh, I would, I would uh, rather just go with the uh, environmental, if you want to say it, environmental protection board, or even just the environmental board is uh, enough sustainability. As the city has used it was a department, right? And so it has a history and a little bit of baggage. So uh, that it's it's not my favorite word. All right, thank you. Sorry, I'm swallowing some water there. Um, anyone else on uh, comments on the name? This is Steve. I guess what I would agree. Just I keep it focused on environmental as kind of an overreaching, encompassing thing. I just don't want it to become project scope where it becomes more than just 
was envisioned with more succinct with environmental committee. Okay. Thank you for the comment. Uh, Ann Fletcher has a comment. Um, I just wondered if the word sustainability is in any of the city docs, um, such as the strategic plan or um, comp plan or anything like that, which would be a reason to have it in there, um, or whether um, whether it's not needed. I, I was just curious if there are connections um, that would be useful to have that in the name. But I also believe that the environmental is the, the stronger and more all encompassing of the two. Megan, do you want to speak to uh, where the word sustainability appears other places? Sure, um, I think it is a, a departmental function that we've had in the city, um, which has covered a lot of different topics, um, including uh, things from climate to green building to sustainable transportation to um, waste reduction and, and recycling. Um, I think it it can incorporate a lot of, um, of those different overall environmental topics um, and also gets into um, kind of the thoughts about wanting to um, meet the needs of the of the future um, or meet the needs of now with um, addressing the needs of the future as well. Um, I am not specifically aware of exactly where it's listed in the comprehensive plan or other places. I know it's in a lot of different documents, um, but I don't think it has a, a specific working definition in one place for the city. And the strategic plan has an environmental stewardship goal. Um, and so mm -hmm. I'm just looking over at my poster um, and, and, the, and the sub line does not include the word sustainability. So I think what we can do is we can share uh, with the council uh, that there was certainly thoughts that environmental board uh, perhaps was more encompassing and we can let the council decide through that. Susan Neville had a comment on the chat saying that sustainability is too generic. Uh, Phil says ecological sustainability is a big issue worldwide. Vote for sustainability in the title. So I think we're hearing a little bit of uh, both. Uh, any other thoughts on the title? Any other words? that anyone thinks should be included or not included? All right, well, let's move on to the next piece of this. And, and maybe, Megan, you could bring up that slide uh, again that has the, the proposed makeup. Um, you know, boards and commissions uh, in Issaquah and other places vary in the, the numbers of people that you have. I think most are not any smaller uh, than five, um, you know, you'll see odd numbers usually just for, um, you know, voting purposes. So you get five, seven, nine, um, you know, it's, it, it's hard, you're hard pressed to find things that are greater than nine. Um, and so I, I think we were looking at seven as sort of being a, a middle ground on the numbers. Uh, there is a tradition in Issaquah of having alternates. Uh, and so uh, that allows, so if a vote full member is unable to attend, having an alternate uh, sometimes makes it easier to have quorum for meetings. So uh, there are two alternates proposed. Uh, we also heard loud and clear at the last uh, uh, workshop that the voices for youth are very important to be heard. Uh, so we were uh, recommending that at least one member of the board be uh, a youth, uh, someone under 25, let's say. Um, and then, um, as far as the other requirements, really uh, a majority of residents in Issaquah, and then I think the, these other pieces just talk about breadth. Um, the, the previous rivers and streams group did not have this kind of breadth in its membership. And so I think uh, what we heard from the last time discussion was it's important to have expertise, but it's also important to have people who have uh, interests. Uh, varying interests in the community and in different types of environmental issues. So that's the proposed membership. Um, let's uh, let's get some feedback. And I think uh, the first person was Trish Bluer who wanted to comment on the board makeup. Yeah, well, Wally, thanks for um, explaining how you came up with the numbers. Um, I know that the transportation board has nine regulars and three alternates. And because of um, 
the breadth of what this board is going to be handling, as well as all the social capital we have available to us in the community. Um, I would like to see us start out with nine regular members and three alternates and um, have two youth under, you know, 25, you know, what, okay. what 16 to 25. Great, thank you. Um, yeah. Comment from Steve, uh, perhaps having nine would allow youth participants and greater high school passion. Uh, Susan Neville said, can more than seven members attend meetings? Um, the, the answer is, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be members, but I mean, certainly these are open to the public. So certainly as many in, individuals who would like to come uh, can come their public meetings publicly noticed. Uh, Phil says the membership proposal is good. Lee Bang says maybe one high school and one college. And Steve says, would youth be through 18 years old? Um, and then agreed the larger board given the scope. Uh, so I think that we're hearing that maybe nine makes sense, having some more fixed numbers uh, for youth. Those are all things we can share uh, with the city council. Um, other comments, Connie? So, uh, given the diversity of topics, uh, and and all, I think the a larger amount, um, and maybe another alternate would give them the ability to break out into subcommittees. Because if you get two big things happening, like the uh, a comprehensive plan update in the land use section and the land use code going all at the same time, plus the parks department is coming through with something. Um, you might want particular people to do a deep dive on those things and advise the rest of the board rather than having the entire board have to grind through the nitty gritty details of the situation. Uh, and a larger board allows you to to be able to do that because you have more people with time. Great. Thank you for the comment, Connie. Um, Ann Fletcher wanted to make sure that we talk about the objective section. So Megan, if you can make sure once we get done with membership, we can go back uh, to the objective session. Uh, Barbara Stevenson has a, a question or a comment. Barbara? No, actually I didn't. I'm sorry, I don't know what I did. Okay, I think you may have raised your hand. Uh, uh, electronically, okay. Uh, which, 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 uh, Tisha saw. Thank you, Tisha. Um, yes, and real quick, Barbara, if you could go ahead and press star three on your phone, that will lower your hand. And if there's any other phone in callers who have a comment or question here, a reminder, you can press star three to let us know. Oh, I am not sure how I get to star three, but I'll try. <laughs> then, well, don't worry about it. Then, no problem. <clears throat> Great. Uh, Connie has another comment. At that. Uh, the line at the bottom, other considerations, process communication, business representation. Um, I'm not exactly sh sh sure how that works on this slide. Because I don't remember if that was a big presentation, but business representation. I don't know exactly uh, what you would be looking for as a board member. Are you saying? we should invite business representatives to speak or is this you want a business owner on the board potentially well, I, I my recollection of some of the comments we heard at the last meeting was that these are other um attributes to potential board members that there were uh the idea of having people who are familiar with processes uh state regional uh, federal processes on environmental issues might be useful. People who had expertise in communications, perhaps as part of their day job, uh, would be useful. And then I think there was also a consideration that a member of the business community uh, might be useful as well. So these are just other considerations of what uh, quality is of the people might have who would be members. Oh, okay, thanks. It would be interesting to see what the. Uh, if there was language language included in there as to what defines some of those things a little more clearly when you come up with how you pick your people. Is that okay. and that's a little fuzzy? And, and ultimately the mayor of Isquah is the one who picks. So 
um, we want to make sure. I, I think the idea here is to is to not have you know very specific slots, perhaps other than for youth members, uh, but to have these would be the attributes that that potential members would have. Uh, Ann Fletcher has a comment. Uh, you you pretty much just said, but I I think that people could have multiple um, uh, attributes, and so perhaps when the mayor's considering. They might look at different people that would be business might be an additional thing they have along with some of the other attributes and, and that would um, allow um, expertise to be spread out over the people. That's kind of what I was thinking. Great. Thank you. Uh, Steve has input. I'm unsure that like a membership representative business, there are commissions promoting the ISQA boards and commissions. The issue is the environment. Why is a membership included that you want this member to represent or advocate for? Um, so that's an additional comment. David has a comment. Or has, uh, you have a question about the uh, objectives. Do you want to talk now at this point, David? Uh, when we get to the objective issue. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any mm -hmm. other questions on um, membership? So I think what we're hearing is nine, maybe better than seven, perhaps an additional alternate, uh, perhaps designating uh, specifically uh, one or two uh, youth members, um, and then the varying diversity of the attributes for the various members. I. That's what I think we're hearing. I'm not seeing any other comments or questions on the area of, uh, of membership. So why don't we go back to that objective statement, Megan? Would you mind pulling that slide back up? There seems to be some interest in talking about that. So we had two folks who wanted to talk about objective. I think Ann Fletcher was the first, Ann. Um, okay, so it was, this is a little bit um, connected to what Connie said, um, and that was that um, there isn't any mention of a connection with the Office of Sustainability or the coordinator, which in your answer, you indicated that the direct or the main one would be with, um, with Megan, but that other uh, staff members would be involved. Um, and I, I wondered if there was a way to include that either here or somewhere. It, it doesn't ever mention the staff connection other than saying that they report to staff. It keeps it really general. I don't know if there's a way to define that that the Office of Sustainability is the main, is sort of the main one or something that, that's all. Thanks for the comment. Um, I think we'll have to go back and look um, at the other, uh, ordinances that create our boards and commissions. I don't know off the top of my head, and, and, and I'll look to Tisha again, because she deals with this probably more than most people. Uh, I don't know that we have staff um, designated for other boards and commissions. Civil service, I think, has a specific designation for a staff member, um, but that's the only one that I'm aware of. Anything else pop into your mind, Tisha, off the top of your head? I I don't think so. I would need to check to be certain. Um, I know we have a city policy, you know, indicating a staff will sort of belong to the commission as their support. And in some cases, we may determine which um, which city department that person will reside in. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll take the question and and, okay. and and do a little bit more research. Yeah, and and I wouldn't I wouldn't want it to um, decrease the flexibility of you know, because departments could change and or reorg, and, you know, and, and you wouldn't want it to um, hinder that uh, flexibility. Um, but some sort of mention might be useful. Great. Thank you for the comment. Uh, back up to David had a comment on the objective. David. Um, thank you. Um, one, this could apply to um, other boards and commissions, but certainly with the effort the uh, Park Department is going through now dealing with a plan from Lake Sammamish State Park to Squawk Mountain State Park, um, 
in along the creek, including trails and other interface kinds of things with with the creek and connecting big parts of the city. Um, we also are working on the Tibbetts Valley uh, plan, park plan, which has a creek through it and is complicated by wetlands and creeks and the rest. So uh, for this board to also advise the park board, they could be uh, very valuable um, to uh, help with uh, some of those issues before they get you know, to the, a plan adopted that gets to the city council. And there might be other times with the with the uh, planning policy commission or some other board or commission that their input to that group would uh, facilitate um, um, with knowledge and make things more efficient and hopefully much better. Thank you. Great, thank you, David. Um, other comments. Steve says uh, if nine members open to three youth, at least uh, receive there were youth at three from the three Esquire high schools. Uh, Connie had a comment. Uh, well, this looks like as good a place as any. Um, if if the objective is to advise the mayor and the city council on the city's plans, policies, and regulations and programs, and what this committee does is staff comes in as they are creating their stuff, and this committee says what they think, and staff goes away and incorporates it into what they're doing. And then that product goes through whatever place it's gonna go through, PPC or I guess park board. Then by the time it actually gets to a mayor and council decision, there, there is really no advice to the mayor city council it is already been incorporated and potentially even altered and um and gotten rid of in that end product because this group will not have any say in that end product and uh, i think that is that is not having teeth that is having uh, say in the beginning, but no teeth in the end where this board can ensure that the protection of the environment actually continues through to the end product. And that to me is, is not the idea of what this board should do. Now, how can you have input at the beginning and ensure it is still there at the end, or it's just as good at the end? Uh, I guess you would have to to have some sort of feedback loop for this board where they could review the end product and then they could provide, if they so chose, uh, a letter to the mayor and city council indicating that yes, this is in line with their thoughts or no, it had been changed and it no longer fits in with their environmental perspective. So this is an important issue, Connie. So if you don't mind, I wanna explore it just a little bit. So um, th there are plans, policies, regulations, and programs, and then there are projects. And so I think you're talking more projects than you are plans, policies, regulations, and programs. No, no, okay. I'm not. I'm talking about, say, for example, if we would take, let's talk about uh, the, the land use code, right? And DSD comes to this group and it goes to a lot of work and it comes out and it says, this is what we have in mind. Well, then the land use code, where is it going to go next? Are they going to, you know, are they going to send it to, to development commission to see what they think? And then I'm sure it has to go to planning and policy commission, right? And then they swap me and they change what they want. And staff has had to listen to what this group had to say. And then they translated into what they thought they heard. And that is what passes on. And then by the time it gets through PPC and heads to the mayor and the council, it might be very changed. And this group does not have another touch unless we decided that we needed to individually or the group follow it along to make sure that it still has the aspects that were considered so important by the group, right? And so there is not a there's not a loop indicating that the end product still fulfills the things that this environmental group thought it needed, which means it 
it doesn't have teeth. It had early input, which is awesome. But early input is not teeth. So sorry, I said most of that twice, but. So, so, so let me, again, this is really important. And, and certainly as we've looked at coming into this meeting tonight, we wanted to, we knew this was going to be one of the issues we had to flesh out. Um, let me explain a previous experience I've had dealing with a historic preservation board. Uh, a historic preservation board would have a similar role um, in advising on a project that then goes to other places, other, other boards and commissions for consideration. Uh, in my previous travels, um, what I have seen is the Historic Preservation Board reviews a project, they submit a report, that report then travels with the project and is reviewed at all the other levels, including the City Council if they're the, the final decision maker. Would something like that make sense where uh, we would have a mandate that whatever that review is um, stands alone and continues to travel with the project as it's reviewed by others? Or does it still need to come back and then with this with this environment board have another review based on what other changes were made, in your opinion, Connie? Well, that um I think that would be you know, this is new information, right? So I have to think it takes a while. Sure. I think that that uh So here's my questions. Who creates that report? If that report gets approved and reviewed by the committee and it stays verbatim, and so then the city council who, or mayor, depending on who has authority, uh, has that standing consideration that should be adequate, then we know that every every play, person that touches it knows the complete and full opinion of the board and it's not watered down and that sounds like a reasonable solution to me i'd be interested to hear what other people thought okay great Th and thank you connie for letting me walk through that because i think one of the things i'd like to do is is as we share the comments of the group perhaps share that as an option and if others have thoughts about this we're kind of going from objective to uh, duties and responsibilities, but let me look at the chat box and see um, where else we have. Uh, from Steinberg KG says a strictly advisory board will not have the teeth that everyone wanted. Consider being advisory for some issues or to some departments, but have more authority for others. Example, a formal adjunct to the development commission with some authority over those decisions. So uh, we'll take that comment and we'll share that with the council. Uh, specifically, um, Tisha had a, oh, that, um, I'll share this if you don't mind, Tisha. She said to me, it says, the Planning Policy Commission does something akin to this. They issue findings of fact to accompany each recommendation. So um, that sounds like that's a, a similar kind of document. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, Phil, I think, is owner. Um, do you have a comment? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? I can, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that with this intensely, um, this intense group here, uh, that we remain apolitical and that we try to stay away from, um, you know, this committee, that committee, this, you know, this representation, that re representation, that we try to focus on the fact that uh, the city is making an extremely good effort in establishing this board, whatever the title is and whatever the final outcome is, but we remain above politics and try to focus on the fact that we are concerned as citizens uh, for our environment. And that's about it. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, Connie has another comment. Okay, so the finding of fact is um, is a presentation that staff puts together that interprets the words of PPC that is often uh, diluted. So I those finding of facts are not as robust. 
as I would like to see coming from the board. And the reason this is the topic for the objectives is because if our objective is to actually advise the mayor and the city council, having it go through and be diluted by the other uh, boards and commissions in the way it was described is not to me advising the mayor and the city council a standalone uh, would. And I wanted to, to add on to that being advisory to development commission. I think that's an awesome added idea. And maybe this group could have two people that would be advisory to development commission when those types of projects came through as sort of a technical help group. Great, thanks for the comment. Um, next is uh, Lee Bang says the traveling document is an intriguing idea, but the Rivers and Streams board rarely spent time creating documents. A uh, question from Talia. Molly, give me just a minute. I may need to unmute her. Okay. Talia, give it a try. Talia, you're unmuted. Okay. I'm moving. Illusion of all these times sounds great and it sounds very important. But what I was wondering is, and I kind of comment on someone, yeah, kind of, as with seven members, it might be more reasonable to have each. Separately, make some other people to like kind of more burden on people because to me it just seems like the burden would be really heavy to cover all those topics and maybe broader community involvement as members because to me it just seems like a lot of weight on those seven people to carry all those uh, topics effectively. Uh Thank you, Talia. You broke up a little bit, but I think what you were you were talking about was the burden on the members of the board uh, to deal with the broad cross section of topics. Um, and I think that's a very reasonable uh, comment. But certainly, th they would be supported by city staff um, as as issues came through. Uh, and I think over time, if the board wanted to look for other uh, help, um, could could go back to the mayor and city council if there was a task force or some other specific group that would need to be formed to help support on a particular issue. So, so thank you for those comments. Did that, did that summarize them fairly well? This is not issues and then they're more knowledgeable. And rather than having it be a large focusing on larger issues. Ty, I'm really sorry. You're, you're breaking up a little bit. So, um, Megan, I don't know if you made that made it out better than I did. I think I pretty much captured um, what you did about the seven members would be too few to cover the broad scope of the board. Um, but we have the recording as well and can listen later. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Next, uh, Steinberg KJ says, I believe that the finding of fact that the River Stream Board presented to the Development Commission in the past was still just advisory and did not include requirements, rather than recommendations for conditions that should have been applied. Um, thank you for that comment. Uh, from Susan Neville, regarding Connie's question, how would the board communicate and be involved with staff on private projects that have environmental issues and mitigation involved, but do not go through the city council? Uh, I think that's part of the, our discussion as to what role um, would be included in law uh, to have uh, that review go if the council's not the final decision point. And it sounds like from the previous comments that would be there's an interest in having this group advise the development commission on its work as well. So uh, that's something we could propose to the city council specifically. And if they would agree, we would come up with the. Uh, policies and procedures uh, to make that happen. Um, 
Next uh, was from Steve, uh, would like to see something that captures duties include advocate and educate. Example, I cannot talk in much detail about how greenhouse gas businesses and causes impacts of the environment. This seems global warming is happening. It will take everyone changing their behavior. The city has helped, but so do people. Unsure how or what this looks like or how the city enables this to happen, but it should be community facing. Thank you for the comment. Uh, from Charles Haffenbrack, uh, good points made about maintaining the integrity of the environment board advice recommendations with other boards and remaining visible as is to this council and mayor. Thank you for those comments as well. Anything else uh, on the objective or should, can we move to the duties and responsibilities? Molly, it looks like we have a call-in user who's raised their hand. Uh, phone number starting with 425-785. I'm going to unmute you now. Hi there, it's Jen Sorowitz. And I had a question, not a question, a comment, actually back to membership. Sorry, I'm late to the party. Um, lots of great discussion here about advising various other commissions. Um, the, I agree 100% with the membership needing to increase to nine, uh, three alternates, and two youth. I like that a lot. And um, my question revolves more around the individuals with expertise. And I, I understand, you know, I can understand why you would put this together and, and try and blanket all of the things that you want touched. But as a matter of process, when you're actually putting this together, um, I think it's pertinent to think about what you already have, what the expertise is that you already have on staff um, that that you can bring to the table so that you can filter out um, the applicants to the board, right, to make sure that you're covering everything because, again, seven or nine people are not going to do it. And then those people, those staff members should be at those meetings. Um, so I don't see just Megan or just your sustainability person, quote unquote, staffing this commission, but like if you have a natural resource manager on staff or you have a landscape architect on staff, those people should be participating in this as well as part of, and it should be incorporated into their priorities of their job, in my opinion. Um, and I'll yield my rest of my time for the moment. Great. Thank you. Great. Th thank you. Um, the reality is, is we don't have a lot of those staff members. Um, and so uh, I, I think certainly we would involve uh, appropriate staff as needed as issues come up. Megan, I don't know if you wanted to say anything about that. I know that you work regularly with other staff members that touch some of these issues. Yes, um, yes, we've been doing a lot of internal conversations about forming this board and I'd say a lot of the staff is really excited about it and agree with the community that you know, this is something that will be great for Issaquah to have. And a lot of those staff members are excited about bringing their um, the projects that they're working on to this board. So they will definitely be there presenting on it, taking the feedback and we're, we're talking about, you know, how that feedback is going to get to um, the council and mayor and, um, you know, they they are also interested in that as well. Um, so I think that they are, uh, will definitely be there and will stay engaged throughout. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it should be a, an in tandem, you know, it's, this is a huge lift and it, it you know, should, the councils, the committee should be allies to, to the staff and, and, but you know, maybe vice versa. So thank you yeah. for your good work. Thank you. Uh, Phil had a comment said regarding committed Steve, there is tons of, info available to us, we can go education as a board, we'll need to talk about this. Phil, did you wanna add anything? Okay, um, no, I, I just wanna let people know that, that there are um, environmental groups which range from international down to local. Um, I encourage the city to continue in this process because this will be an example to other groups and education is a huge part of it. Some education occurs in the schools, but I believe that programs can be developed which would involve adults, those decision makers who have the money. Thank you. Megan, can you bring up the roles and responsibilities slide and we can, we've got about 25 minutes left in our hour and a half uh, um, discussion. Megan, was there one slide or two slides for roles, duties, and responsibilities? Just this one. 
just the one great we also the following slide is the sample agenda topic so oh. i'm happy to toggle between us if people have questions great um so the duties and responsibilities uh, again provide feedback on city plans regulations and codes that implement impact the natural environment to ensure alignment with community vision research and review environmental policies and ordinances for the city advise on planning and prioritization of actions related to climate mitigation and preparedness develop recommendations on program services and priorities relating to environmental sustainability and protection and develop and maintain an environmental and sustainability checklist used on projects any comments or thoughts on any of those duties and responsibilities recognizing we have covered uh, bits and pieces of this before and i know that megan is capturing that in her notes that we'll share with the council and fletcher has a question Thank you. Um, on the first bullet, I was wondering what alignment with community vision means. Is there a definition? Does it mean the strategic plan? Um, or is it a group of documents? Or how would that be determined? You know, Anne, that's a really excellent question. And I, and I think there is no one specific answer to that. Uh, I think that one of the reasons that cities have boards and commissions to advise on topics is this whole idea of community vision. How do you delegate community vision? I think in part it's by having a group of residents come together and share their thoughts. And so I think that's part of how you get community vision. Uh, certainly look at other source documents. Um, I think our strategic plan is probably the best of those source documents for community vision. But really it's one of the reasons we want to have the board, I think. It's, is that that board then helps uh, articulate what that community vision or community standard is in these areas. So thank you for the question. It's a really, it's, it's, a, it's an important foundational kind of question. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear what you said um, because um, the strategic plan was done at a time before um, climate uh, change and climate action had become very dominant and it's not very strong in my opinion in that area and so um, the idea that um, that that we can continually evolve and update uh, community values uh, alignment is great it sounds really good to me Connie has a question or a comment There we go. Uh, so, um, plans, regulations, and codes that impact the natural environment to ensure alignment with the community vision. So, we have long had, in theory, plans and regulations and code that protected the nat natural environment, yet their implementation impacted the bejesus out of our natural environment. So with this group as shown having very little uh say or coverage of the actual implementation of the language it's creating i see an issue uh that would need to be addressed for me to be satisfied with this group because you can plan all day long but if it's implemented differently then you got a problem then uh on the second bullet point research it's hard to imagine this group going out and doing uh independent research so that sort of makes me gasp along with all the topics on the next page like 12 slides and we're going to research too i mean some of us research by nature but it seems like it it's not a duty and responsibility to do research uh to me and then can, can, um, I, can I stop you because I don't want to lose I don't want you to go through the whole list because oh sorry I'm, I'm, I'm not taking I'm not taking as copious notes as I probably should so on the first well, one it on sounds tape. like it sounds it sounds and that's one of the reasons I'm not uh yeah sound like the first one you're concerned about implementation is that yes. correct the second yeah. one uh, my sense is on the second one is that it would be more reviewing research so that if, if staff brought or independent or members of the board brought research from others, other parties, that the board might collectively review that research. Does that make more sense to you? 
It does to me, but you know, I, I have a pretty high tolerance for research, but I could, that, that even made me gasp, so. Okay, I mean, and, and research perhaps is not maybe, you know, if best practices or information from other jurisdictions. I mean, I don't necessarily think, Megan, as we were putting this together, we were thinking about academic research. Right, we because I, you know, yeah. What other communities might be doing. So I, I don't want to stop you, but I just didn't want to lose the, those first two thoughts. Right. So uh, then the climate, the climate stuff, I'll let Ann and Dave see if that works, but develop recommendations on program services and priorities relating to environmental sustainability and protection. Um, I don't know what that means. Developing a recommendation on a program service or priority. Is that, is that reviewing? Is that creating? Is that, that I thought we talked about, uh, working to create programs and services or brainstorm them and get them put on the board rather than recommending things. So that one was a little awkward to me. And then the final one, uh, the environmental checklist to be used on projects. This is as close as you get to implementation, but um, all projects citywide, right? Not just DSD projects, po private projects, it's private and public uh, projects at all levels and then that is where I could see a feedback loop for implementation where you could add a line and, and you know, it would be like a, a yearly review to see how successful the checklist is. That doesn't really satisfy me. I don't think that our city is to a point where it can self-regulate and will protect the environment without somebody watching very closely, but it would be a token gesture anyway. Okay, sit. Thank you, Connie. Uh, John is next. Uh, yeah, just that, that um, I just on the makeup of the board, I, I would envision it to have um, to be broken down into be like subcommittees or whatever that would deal with little specific things and bring it back to the board as a whole. And I sure would like to see uh, the output of this board be uh, be a report that then uh, would go back either to the uh, well, would go to the uh, the mayor and city council, but also would travel along with the project so that other other boards and whatever would see what uh, what they were doing. That's all. Great, thank you. And, and I, I think one of the things, Megan, we might want to add is this concept of an annual report um, that many of our boards and commissions are required by ordinance to produce an annual report. So uh, you know that might be some sort of compendium, not only of of uh, reviews of projects, but also other programs and initiatives that the board has. So, John, thank you for those comments. Um, committed Steve had a, a question uh, about the fifth bullet to develop and maintain an environmental stability checklist to be used on projects. How or what does such a checklist get used? What is the reason for being? Does it have any functional purpose or outcome? Or we just have and look at it. Um, Megan, you've done a little bit of work on checklists and I think we have other checklists that we use in our development process. Can you speak to that? Sure. Yeah, I think the, the scope of this is is exciting actually. Um, it, it could cover a lot of different things. So it could cover um, you know items that are typically fall under you know green building, whether it's um, water conservation or energy codes. It could also include things um, like uh, native plantings. I know that's something that we heard a lot in the comments. So um, I think the scope of it is pretty broad right now. Um, and there's you know also other ideas for it could either um, you know have items that are required or it could be a menu of options. So I think it's pretty open right now. So we'll be interested to hear from the board once it's formed um, what their vision for it would be. Great. Thank you, uh, Megan. Hopefully, uh, Steve, that answered that question. Uh, from Phil to everyone, duties and responsibilities. Can we sneak in education here? Uh, climate change is reality and does devolve down to household education and decisions. Thanks. We'll we'll note that comment. Um, Steve had uh, another question, which I think is two things down. 
Environmental Commission have input not just on Title 18 code, but things include uses of environmental impact statements or whether or not approval of development considers environmental impact. Um, thanks for the comment. I think the checklist is, is meant uh, to do uh, that. Uh, Ann Fletcher had a comment agreeing with the annual report. So that catches us up with the chat box. Any other comments or questions on the duties and responsibilities? Ann Fletcher has a question. On bullet number three, on uh, climate mitigation and preparedness or resiliency, I think you mentioned. Um, I have been confused by um, uh, different definitions of mitigation, climate mitigation, because it's mitigation is used in so many different ways. So I wondered if perhaps some sort of definition or some discussion having to do with the terminology or somehow making that clear what that means. Sure, so some language about reducing greenhouse gas emissions would be mitigation and then um, preparing for the impacts of climate. Um, so yeah. I can note yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, it, it's the term of the week sometimes as far as what what is being described. And sometimes it's better just to describe the actual pieces rather than to have the overarching term. So thanks, Ann, for that, appreciate it. Um, I think next was a comment from Connie. Right, I just have to uh, emphasize with our current city in its current format, with our current DSD department, or at least pre-COVID, and our current parks department and our current uh, public works engineering department, there is no way that you cannot have review of their projects and not expect impacts to the environment because their culture is to build. Their culture is not to protect the environment. So uh, all of this is saying, well, we're gonna get those codes and checklists put into place, but as we go, these projects are occurring and the impacts are occurring and they will continue to occur. And there will be no one, even as small as the River and Streams Board was, there will be no one to make sure that does not happen. And I can't let that be because that will cause near-term harm to our environment that we will never get back. And while I like the concept of this board and I like the breadth of us, it still leaves this gaping problem that is a near-term problem that this does not fix. So I feel the need for a shorter term fix to ensure that we don't just let, let the environment have it because we're busy making a commission. And it'd break my heart. My heart gets broken all the time watching what happens to our town. And so I have to stand and say, don't break my heart. Don't let that happen because we have a gap with no one watching. Thanks. So Connie, is there a duty and responsibility that you would add to help keep your heart from breaking? Well, not, I, 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 I I felt like we were going into summarization, so I I started to summarize before okay. you you summarized. Right. My okay. summary is we don't have anything in the middle. So if a duty and responsibility would be that we create an interim board that actually jumps into action uh, before you take the the amount of time it takes to get people into place that starts negotiating and watching and, and reviewing many of these things, including any projects that might be coming through, then that would be okay. But I don't think you can go without something interim. They, the staff has to feel like there is at least some check to being able to just do it. We can't see anything. We're out here isolated in our houses. Uh, we have an active projects list. We don't know what the parks department is doing. The road projects go on. And 
uh, I, I know already that there's a wetland in a stream that the city is indicating that there will be no mitigation for on site, that they will do it off site uh, somewhere in the county. And there's nothing I can really do about that from this distance. And so it causes me distress out here. We need to have at least something, some check and balance at this point in time until this committee can get underway. And now I've said it all again the third time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Connie. Uh, a question about what is DSD? DSD is the Development Services Department. Uh, they have just changed their name and we're be rolling out uh, that change here shortly. But when we refer to DSD, that's the, the department that is our planning, building, uh, zoning, uh, uh, project engineering department. Um, Bill had a comment. Uh, yes, I do. And this is for Connie because she is so heartfelt in her reactions. I just want to let her know and everybody else know that this whole process is good. And we must trust that we can really um, reach a solution. Um, it may not be something that we like it initially, but it is something that we're all working together towards. That's it. Thank you. Ann Fletcher had a comment about what the uh, time frame for the board getting up and running. Uh, the next stop on this uh, process is going to the city council at their July 14th um, study session. Uh, we'll uh, take uh, all these comments, package them up, um, hopefully get some direction from the council. Uh, and Megan, I think our plan is, is if we get direction from the council on July 14th, that, that we would be able to take this uh, ordinance uh, creating the new group uh, to the council in August. Uh, they're, they're, the council will have at least one meeting in August and then um, begin recruiting for that board through the balance of August. So our hope would be uh, latter part of September have this group up and running. So that's the, uh, the plan. Uh, from Susan Neville, the duties and responsibilities will or should evolve as the board comes together, but a short term fix is needed if possible. Appreciate the openness and forming a partnership in the bottom up approach. You're using Cray this board. This is a great opportunity for Issaquah. Thank you, Susan, for those comments. Uh, Trish Bloor has a comment. Yeah, well, I'm um, commenting on uh, Connie and I guess Susan's um, written comment as well. Well, Connie, you're just going to continue being a watchdog until we get this in place, right? I'm stuck in my house. <laughs> well, so what is the short term solution? Oh, oh my God! Don't do that. Are you asking me or yeah, sure anybody? Wally. Well, sure. I'll let Wally answer that because I already I already hazarded my short term solution. Uh, you know, I, I I think as we've been going through this, our short term solution is to be uh, thoughtful but expeditious with this process, and so um, we were ready to go prior to COVID nineteen. Um, that that kind of we lost a couple months in that process, uh, but I see no reason why after tonight's discussion we will not have a lot of information for the council to consider on July 14th. And so, uh, from a staff perspective, I think we just want to get the group up and running as quickly as possible. Um, owner from Phil says we're reaching the end and congratulate Megan and Wally in helping us through this. Thank you. We've got six minutes left. Um, any other comments on duties and responsibilities or any other summary thoughts or comments anyone has before we wrap up at seven o'clock? Going once. Question from Ann Fletcher. Um, on the, under the duties and responsibilities below the bullets, there was a statement that said duty and responsibilities will be detailed in an ordinance. And then uh, the part I'm wondering about is, and additional actions can be directed by the mayor. Will that be, with that phrase, additional actions can be directed by the mayor, will that be in the ordinance? It, it certainly can be. Uh, again, one of the things we're trying to do, and we'll do more as we get, as we actually start writing the ordinances, uh, we try to be consistent with other ordinances for other boards and commissions. Um, and so I think we're we're going to want to do that, and I think Megan has reviewed some of these 
uh, lightly as we were preparing for tonight. Um, and there is consistency, inconsistency as far as direction of the mayor, direction of the council, direction of all. Um, and so I think we want to, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more, but I think certainly uh, boards and commissions are appointed by the mayor. And so the mayor has uh, that executive authority uh, to, to steer um, as the mayor. Thank you. A uh, couple of last comments. A uh, comment from Dave Osmer. Dave, are you there? I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me, Wally? We can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, once again put in a plug for having this commission have some decision making authority. Uh, I like the the uh, uh, comments that have been made about getting it uh, having a document that flows through the process with uh, with the proposal so that everybody sees the opinion of the project of this uh, uh, this board. Uh, but still, I think there needs to have it needs to have some uh, decision making responsibility in the end. Um, and then finally, I'd like to just uh, put in a plug for adding the the word um, stewardship uh, to, to the title um, uh, environmental stewardship board. Great, thank you. Um, Comment from David, actual work going on now from Connie, yes. Um, it's 6.57, three minutes left. Any final comments? I, I can be quick. Um, Megan's done some great work on this, but she's got a little project on climate going on that I think this would be a good time to make a quick uh, advertisement for. Sure. All right, Megan, you want to plug, uh, plug your next project? You're Not muted, muted Megan. Megan. It happens to everyone. <laughs> thank you. Um, so yes, I will close with that. Um, so overall, um, thank you everyone for the, the input. And um, as uh, City Administrator Bob Kowitz was saying, we will be going to study session on um, July 14th and, um, and council soon after that. And thank you, David, for that plug. Um, we are working um, closely with a few community groups, people for climate action, um, Issaquah Alps Trails Club, and the Issaquah Chamber of Commerce on uh, community convening on climate, um, where we're going to be bringing together a lot of groups to um, talk about an, a course of action for addressing climate change in the city, um, both for the city and community leaders to be looking at and paying attention to. Um, so here's my contact information here. You're welcome to reach out um, about that or the environmental board as well, or any other topics around the environment or sustainability. Um, and we will um, be having a great session on climate and looking forward to having some participants there. Great, Megan, thank you and thank you uh, for all the great work you did to get this all put together. We're